your ultimate team coin needs, check out utcoinsforyou.com. There will be a link in the description. And if you use the code CHEZ, you can get yourself a 5% discount. Hey guys, how's it going? Tez back again with another episode of the World Cup Squad Series here on Random FIFA Videos and on my channel of course as well. If you're watching on the community channel, then feel free to, uh, to check the link in the description to my personal channel if you want to come over and subscribe over there for more from me on a daily basis. But basically, if you're new to this series, what we do is we take a team that's qualified for the Brazilian 2014 World Cup. We build a squad of nationals for that team, not necessarily a team of players that are actually going to go to the World Cup. Just a squad of 11 nationals that I've thrown together. And then uh, we have some goals in the background whilst we discuss their in depth World Cup history so uh, as always it's not necessarily about the gameplay so if you want to tab out and just listen to the commentary then of course feel free to do so a couple of quick notes about the team I went from 4-3-3 because I wanted to involve that in form Quadrado at left wing so we've only got Falcao up top and uh, Ibarbo has been left out we've got second in form James Rodriguez there at Cam as well and it the, uh, the transferred Riascos at right wing although to be, I have to be completely honest this has been the worst team that I've played with since starting this series which is weird because on paper it looks pretty good but uh, let's jump into Colombia's World Cup history then shall I mean they actually didn't enter the first two tournaments in 1930 and 1934 and then proceeded to withdraw from the 1938 tournament before again not entering at Brazil 1950 so it was a sporadic start to say the least then uh, when it came to Switzerland 54 they were actually banned from international competition because during 49 and 54 the Colombian League actually broke away from FIFA during uh, a period that was referred to as the quote unquote El Dorado period but eventually they were eligible, they were eligible to, uh, to qualify for Sweden 58 but they didn't, they failed to qualify for the next tournament and then in fact eventually they did qualify for a tournament in Chile on South American soil in 1962 and they got eliminated in the group stage. It wasn't the best tournaments. They opened with a defeat to a to fellow South American team, Uruguay 2-1. They followed that up with a 4-4 draw against the Soviet Union, which were a very, very strong side at that time, before following that up with uh, an absolute hammering 5-0 to uh, the team that eventually finished fourth in the in the overall tournament, Yugoslavia. So uh, not the best of opening tournaments. tournaments. And uh, you can probably guess what happened after, uh, after that for the next one. They didn't qualify. In fact, they didn't qualify again until 1990. Six back-to-back -back World Cup tournaments that went unqualified for before they put in their best performance at a World Cup tournament prior or since. At uh, Italian 1990, they won their opening game 2-0 against the United Arab Emirates. They saved face against Yugoslavia, who they previously lost 5-0 to in 62, by only losing 1-0 this time. So clearly there's been some improvement there. And uh, they battled to a one-all draw with the, the eventual winners, West Germany. So even though they, uh, they got through to uh, the round of 16, they, they definitely showed that they had the uh, had the talent in the squad to perhaps go even further. And they came up against Cameroon in the uh, in the round of 16. They stood in the way of a quarter final, and uh, they were actually able to take it to uh, to extra time after a goalless draw after 90 minutes. But unfortunately for Colombia, Roger Miller stepped up, scored two goals in extra time to uh, to break Colombian hearts. They did grab a goal back in uh, in the 115th minute, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to uh, to save them, and they did take an early plane home. However, they did qualify for back-to-back -back tournaments for the first time in their history. In fact, they qualified for back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tournaments. They uh, they qualified for Italian 90, as we've discussed, then USA 94 and France 98. Although unfortunately, again, both times they were eliminated in the group stage. They did in fact play England in the uh, group stage at France 98 which was uh, decided by a gorgeous free kick from uh, a certain Mr Beckham that sealed a 2-0 win for the three lines after a Darren Anderson of all players put uh, put England 1-0 in front but they haven't made it to a tournament since uh, since France 98 in the past 16 years so this is going to be their first tournament for quite a while but can they progress out of the group stage this time we will have to wait and see of course the other teams in the group we've already covered Greece and uh, the Ivory Coast Colombia the third and next week we'll have Japan so it isn't the uh, there isn't a team that you would say is a standout definite group winner in that particular group there are three very very strong sides in uh, in Colombia Japan and the Ivory Coast and then Greece really can cause an upset if uh, if they so wish so if they put the performances in they definitely can uh, get themselves out of that group say so it's really hard to uh, to predict what's going to happen at Brazil 2014 in group C personally I think Colombia will progress but uh, a lot of it depends on whether they can get Falcao fit or not of course he's injured his knee ligaments playing for Monaco not too long ago whether he'll be fully fit for the World Cup or even partially fit to play some part 
we don't yet know. We will have to wait and see. But uh, I do predict that they will get out of the group personally. If you have any differing opinions, then feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Just a few miscellaneous stats, as always, before we finish. Their highest ever FIFA ranking is third between uh, July and August of 2013. Although they do still sit fourth in the all-time FIFA rankings as uh, as we record this in February 2014. So whether that uh, whether that position changes between now and the tournament, we'll have to wait and see. But their most caps is uh, is held by Carlos Valderrama. Of course, he's had that infamous uh, afro haircut that was absolutely superb. He had 111 caps for his country, and then the top goal scorer is Arnoldo Iguarain. I'm not too sure whether I'm pronouncing that right. I do apologise, but he has 25 goals for Colombia in all competitions. So well, that is going to bring this one to a close, guys. Do hope you have enjoyed listening to uh, to the Colombian history. Of course, if you missed the previous episode, there'll be a link in uh, in the description on my channel or as an annotation on screen. But uh, of course, as always, if you're watching on RFV, feel free to check the link in the description to my channel if you want to come and subscribe to Chesnoy Gaming. And uh, that's all for this week. We'll have Japan next week, and that will round out Group C, and then we'll make a crack on Group D. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.